Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial I'd like to talk about the behavior and edge reaction sections of Null Light Factory 3.0. To use these, make sure that you are set to use lights in your After Effects composition, and you actually have some lights to use as light sources for Null Light Factory. So back in the effect controls, if you scroll down to the behavior section, we have a pop-up list of a number of different looping behaviors. The first one is blink. So if I turn this on, take note of the cycle duration, which is one second. So right now I'm at zero and at 12 frames, you'll notice that the lights go away and then at one second, the lights come back on. My composition is set to 24 frames per second. So the halfway point is at 12 frames. So the complete duration is one second. The halfway point is where the blink on and off happens and then back at one second. So that's why these are called looping behaviors. They loop over and over and you could keyframe these but the behavior section makes it a lot easier. We can define the brightness maximum which overrides the brightness up in your lens section as well as the minimum brightness. So when it blinks out the minimum brightness can actually be set to something other than zero. Now if we'd like some randomness to this cycle duration so it's not exactly one second at each cycle we can turn up the cycle duration random which is zero to 100 so it is a zero to 100 factor on each cycle in terms of its random factor. Now if you want true randomness you can simply turn on flicker and this will give you a flickering behavior for each light. The number of flickers per second is set to 10 by default, which is pretty good, but if you want more flicker, simply turn it up and you'll get a faster flicker for each light. I'll set this to, let's say, 8 flickers per second, which should be quite enough. Now the flicker rest duration simply allows for a percentage of the cycle duration to go to its minimum value and simply rest for the remainder of the duration. So it'll flicker and then rest and then start again. Now next we've got a pulse behavior. This is simply an oscillating value that goes between the minimum and maximum using the cycle duration. It's basically a sinusoidal motion. But here's the cool thing. We have a delay per light. So let me set this to 0.1 second. Each of these lights is now going to be delayed by one tenth of a second. So it's going to cycle through these. Now it's going to cycle through these using the layer order and they're scattered fairly randomly. But if you want more randomness you can simply select randomize and it will randomly pick uh, a a sequence to move through in the lights. You can also use the name of the layer, forward or backward. Now one of my favorites is strobe. You can think of strobe sort of like a camera flash. It starts very abruptly, it starts at its maximum value, and then fades down to its minimum value. Now the cycle duration is still one second, and currently I have the strobe fade as 100% of the cycle. So you'll see that from zero to one second, it slowly fades down to nothing and then starts over again at one second. If I set the strobe fade to 50%, this will fade much quicker. And you'll notice by 12 frames, it fades down to zero. And then we have nothing between 13 frames and then back at one second. So when we introduce a delay per light, we can get something that looks like camera flashes. Again, the delay order is completely adjustable. You can either use the layer name, forward reverse, or randomize. So let's turn off the behaviors and move on to the edge reaction section. In fact, let me get rid of most of these lights and just have one left over. Edge reaction, simply put, allows the light to react as it moves to the edge of the composition. We can have it do one of two things. We can have it get brighter by using a positive value, or we can have it diminish by using a negative value. 
The area in which it reacts is defined by the width and feather right here. And if you don't like to guess what that looks like, you can simply click on Edge Visualization and adjust the width and feather like so. And then use the edge reaction as you see fit. So if I set this to a fairly large negative value, this will largely diminish. And you can see it reacting inside that edge visualization area. Pretty straightforward. So that is the behavior and edge reaction sections of Null Light Factory 3.0.